crucial feature of any credible long-range explorer yacht is its anchoring and mooring equipment. It needs to be reliable, it needs to be strong, and you need to be able to count on it when it matters the most when you're anchoring in a wide range of weather conditions, sometimes in remote areas. With the Arxon 85, we've taken this to the next level. We have two of everything, we have multiple means of powering, and everything is to the highest specification. So starting with the selection of the anchors themselves. Lloyd's registers regulations for a boat of this displacement, this windage area, this size, is that we have a primary anchor with a high holding power and a mass of 110 kilograms. So what we have on the Arxon 85 is a super high holding power anchor, which is proven to perform to a much higher level than a high holding power anchor. And that's got a mass of 135 kilos. It's an ultramarine, it's made of duplex stainless steel, super robust, it's not gonna corrode, it's always gonna look good. And they're proven to be reliable in a variety of bottom holding conditions. As a spare anchor, we have an 80 kilogram claw anchor, also in stainless. Both of these anchors are on 140 meters of 14 millimeter chain. Just to put that in perspective, again, the rule requirement for the primary anchor is that we have 100 meters of 12 and a half millimeter chain. So again, the, the mass of the chain we're putting out, the length of it, and the holding power of the anchor all combine to a really super strong combination. I'm up here on the bowsprit just to take a closer look at where the anchors are stowed. So the first thing you notice is just how robust this aluminium structure is. This is reinforced to take all of the high loads of anchoring in the worst conditions. So you've got this solid bulkhead here in 12 millimeter aluminium, all of this six to eight millimeter structure, and then either side of the anchor rollers, you've got 16 millimeter aluminium plating. So the, we're actually at anchor at the moment. So the primary anchor is out, and you can see the chain going over those substantial rollers there. But you can see the secondary anchor here is stowed. It stows neatly up into the bowsprit on these rollers. There's this clamp here, which clamps down the stock of the anchor to make sure that when you're at sea, that anchor doesn't bounce around. And then I'll show you further aft other ways in which that is secured and handled. So moving a little bit further aft of the bowsprit in these hatches, we can see we have top access to the chain locker and the spurling pipe, but we also have access here to the chain itself and various means of securing the chain. So first of all, we've got this big stainless heavy duty chain stopper. We've also got what we call a, a, a devil's claw. So that slots into the chain stopper, hooks over the chain and you can tighten that up. And that just pulls the anchor home, makes sure everything's really securely stowed. That's not going anywhere. You also note here we have a knife. So on the very end of the chain is what we call the bitter end. And that's a short length of high strength synthetic fiber rope that's connected at one end to the structure of the boat itself and at the other end to the end of the chain. And what that means is if for some reason you needed to let your entire anchor chain and anchor go in an emergency in a hurry, from up here you can safely cut that line and, and let it go. And that minimizes the risk, makes it as quick as possible to do that in an emergency. With that top access to the anchor locker, you can see your chain you can work out if there's any knots or anything fouling in there, but you can also access that from inside the boat. <music> Lastly, up here on deck, we have our two anchor windlasses, and these are both hydraulically driven Lumar V8s. Now these are actually quite oversized, but the reason for that is if you were to drag your anchor into very deep water, you wanna make sure that you're able to lift the entire weight of the anchor, the chain, any mud, or any kelp that might have attached itself. It's really important, especially if in a remote area, that you're able to pull that back in. And the hydraulic power for these is normally provided by the hydraulic pumps off the main engine gearboxes. And you can power one of these windlasses at full power off either one of those if you had to. So even if you lost a hydraulic pump, you've still got full power to the windlass. We also then have what we call night mode. So if you're in a marina, if you're a quiet anchorage and you just want to adjust your chain very slightly at night and you don't want to make too much noise, there's a hydraulic electric pump in the engine room that allows you just to, at a slower speed, operate one of the windlasses. So that's quite a nice feature. You don't want to upset your neighbors and it's another form of redundancy in the event that you had to retrieve your anchor and your normal system wasn't working. You can see here where this chain comes around the windlass into the spurling pipe here, the horse pipe there. There's a stainless steel donut essentially around that just to prevent any wear to the aluminium. And that's got an isolation as always between the stainless and the aluminium so that we don't get any issues there with dissimilar metals corroding. And then lastly here, we've got the brake wheels, nice, easy, accessible location for the crew to operate the windlasses. There are a number of means of controlling the anchor windlasses, depending on how many crew you have on board, how and where you're anchoring. So starting up here, 
each side, port and starboard, we have one of these IP rated Lumar hand controls for the windlass. And these are on a nice long lead. So I could be leaning right over the bow. I can see where the anchor stows. I can see the, where the anchor's going into the water. I have the same thing both sides. At each of the two helm positions inside the boat, there's also a chain counter and a windlass control. And then on the port and starboard bridge wings on this particular boat and on the stern docking station, there's also a windlass control. So wherever the captain is standing, wherever the crew are working from, there's a means of adjusting that anchor, which is a really important feature when you're gonna be traveling the world, berthing in different locations, using your anchor in a number of different ways. It's not a bad thing to have. In the fore peak here, we have excellent access to the two chain lockers. So behind these heavy duty aluminum hatches, Simply open that with a quarter turn, carefully stow that out of the way. And through here, you can see the chain for the primary anchor. Now these are very deep, so they just really reduce the risk of chains getting into awkward positions and knotting. There's stainless chain as well, which helps. But also, we've lined the anchor locker with this 20 millimeter thick HDPE sheeting. What that means is that at no point does the stainless steel chain make contact with the aluminum hull. So from a corrosion perspective, that's really important. It's also got lots of holes in it, it lets air circulate, it lets any water coming off the chain drain away really easily through the bottom of the locker and overboard. And we have the same here on the port side for the secondary anchor. So that's the anchoring arrangement from the Argus 85. Safe, robust, reliable, redundant. The ultimate in long range autonomous adventure cruising. As always, if you have any thoughts, questions, please put them in the comments or come and ask us at www.arts.com. Thanks very much.